Welcome to SEC Sports Roundtable, the place for sports and other stuff, we'll say. Uh, we've got a full roundtable here. Everyone direct direct flights back from Vegas just for this. Now they've been back a little bit recovering, I think, um, but we're glad to have them back. We're going to start off and say, hello, Drew, how are you? Shane, I missed you guys last week. I served my one-week suspension for uh, – for being tardy coming back to the podcast while I was in Vegas, and I'm glad to be back. Well, I, I don't know if you got to listen to the full podcast or not, but uh, we we definitely took our shots at, shots at you while you weren't there. So well, That's the way. I wouldn't expect anything uh, less out of three characters like you and uh, Wisner and, and Smiley. So well, we, that's the way it goes. We, we tried to be nice, but it just kept getting out of hand. When, a guy, when you're behind somebody's back, it's easy to, easy to talk em. big, right? Yeah. It's easy to throw that knife in there. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got uh, Brett Young with us. Shane, how we doing? We're doing all right. We're going to have a – for those who do not know, we uh, regularly get this out the first of the week, but, you know, Halloween was Monday, and, you know, I have a little one, so that threw that schedule off. And then other other commitments. So we're, we're recording this late in the week, so it's a, it's a late, late uh, podcast for us. So we're going to definitely – talk more about the week ahead as opposed to the week that was but uh you know it's it's a late night so I, i'm excited i don't I, I don't have a curfew so we can we can <laughs> take go to go to midnight i guess sounds good uh, so we've got chad caldwell with us how are you chad shane i'm good it's, gr- it's great to be back good i'm we're, we're glad to have you it's, it's a it's a good year for vandy football and i know you're super excited about it yeah a couple plays from being six and two and the fact that we're not ready for basketball season is a good thing well let's talk about basketball season you you got to miss out on a uh, our basketball preview we did and i think we we mentioned it then or right after that we had another podcast uh, but some some news coming from the vandy camp in the basketball arena how do you feel about all that um, well, not as bad as I did earlier. You know, Festus Azili was suspended for the first six games. What did he do? Did he cheat, Chad? He, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess if you call uh, getting a meal paid for and a hotel room paid for um, cheating, I guess that's called cheating. But uh, were there any women in the hotel room? That's the no. Only, that's Festus the only... does not. Uh, he was. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, hold on, you break, breaking news. <laughs> <Wait a> minute. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to tell us about Festus Azili here? Uh, Festus is a one-woman man, and she was not there. <laughs> okay. We thought this was going to go somewhere real quick, real oh, fast. No, but no. But the, the lucky thing is, well, not lucky, but the, the suspension doesn't even matter because he got hurt his knee in practice. He's going to be out six to eight weeks anyway. So. Is he going to be suspended after that now, or is that going to be? No, but the, the suspension will carry into the injury time missed. All right, well, that's finally a good break. I, I, we talked about this, and I'll say it again. Chad, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, I don't understand. I think it's a double standard. doesn't make any sense. Uh, we talked about John Wall, and, uh, you know, he had – I think his his benefits came out to somewhere around $10,000, and he missed – what did he miss, two games? Two games. Yep. Two games uh, uh, a couple years ago, and Festus Azili's clearly not even close to, to $10,000 worth of uh, benefits, and he's missing – how many did you say, six? Six. Six games. Uh, who was the uh, – was it Goldborn last year that, that bought a manager's parking pass? I mean – Yeah, last year Lance Goldborn had a uh, a senior manager's parking pass. He bought the parking pass himself. It was like 250 bucks or so. But the point is that he shouldn't have been allowed to get it. And he was – I think he was – It's only for like what, seniors or upperclassmen. Right. It was like two to three games <laughs> suspension for a parking pass. That doesn't make sense. I think that's ridiculous. I think they pick on the, the nice guys sometimes but. Still a good season. You're pumped for the season, I would imagine, right? Yes, re- ready to go. Exhibition Monday night against somebody, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we got the uh, Harlem Globetrotters, or <laughs> then we got think, uh, Washington, Washington, Washington Washington Generals. Generals. Don't the Globetrotters really still? Do they still play like yeah, they're, exhibition they're playing games? like at a Williamson County uh, middle school here next week? So <laughs> like they're playing at there, or they're playing an actual middle school team? Uh, I, I believe they're going to play a prof- uh, an adult team, but. <laughs> I think they've stepped down and playing in 600 seater arenas now. Was it the was it the Globetrotters a few years ago that played uh, Michigan State? I believe preseason. Yeah, they they had a little tour there for a while where they got serious and started playing. Yeah, college it's teams. like yeah, it yeah. wasn't. I mean, it was. I mean, you know, the Globetrotters are very good basketball players, and you see them, you know, spinning balls and throwing buckets of confetti <laughs> on the fans and everything. But I, it really was for about a two year, two or three year stretch. They they just said forget all the the shenanigans and let's play ball and they I remember they played a top 25 ranked team I think it was Michigan State they played close. several teams yes I mean they played them close uh but but don't the Washington Generals always play them close yeah I think the, the, they got to keep the the Generals in the game but that's usually because the the Globetrotters run the you know the the three-man weave for about 40 seconds you know they probably 
couldn't get the shots off on the shot clock because uh, they, were, they were, you know, running <laughs> Curly Neal uh, weave at the top of the key. Is Curly still with the Globetrotters? He's got to be. Metal Arg Lemon, is that another guy? Yeah. That is. That, I think those guys are, are retired Globetrotters <laughs> now. They're in their 70s. I think they're alive, but. Yeah, we'll have to check on that. <laughs> have no idea about that. We'll but get our uh, stat man to check that out for us. I, Shane, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, Tennessee had their first uh, their first exhibition game tonight. Just uh, concluded uh, against Carson Newman, twenty one point victory, seventy three fifty two, big win for Conzo and the boys. Seventy three points. We thought it would take till about game four to get up to seventy three for Conzo. Worried about that defense. Didn't think uh, Carson Newman could put fifty two on the big orange, but uh, but a uh, good offense, and uh, we're excited about the season. Yeah, I definitely think that Tennessee fans should be excited about this win because there's not going to be many more. It could be a long yeah, year on right. the hill, no doubt, no I'm doubt. Gonna be, let me borrow your pen. I'm going to write that down. So, so what do you think they're going to finish in the uh, SEC? Let's not worry about the, pr- the the preseason games and the non-conference. What do you think they'll finish? Was it 16, well, 16, games? 16 games? Before so. we went on the air, I said two and fourteen, but that was just a little hate coming out. I'd say at best five and eleven, uh, maybe six and ten. I. I can't disagree with that a whole lot. Um, I, I'd, I'd take eight and eight right now, and not play a game. But I, I think that's that's really stretching it. Probably they're, they're not going to be real good. Uh, I mean, I think you got to you got to throw six games in there that that are going to be pretty tough. You're playing top fifteen teams with two against Vandy, two against Florida, and two against uh, Kentucky. Uh, you know, you're going to have a tough one against Alabama, tough one against Mississippi State. Uh, so there's half their games are, are going to be against solid competition. So yeah, I mean, of course you take eight and eight. I think they'll win a couple of those, but but I think what was my, I was somewhere around eight and eight in our SEC uh, podcast. I think that's what you said. But uh, I, you know, who knows? We'll we'll cross our fingers. Uh, it's going to be a different style of basketball, but but uh, we don't need to waste our everybody's time talking about Tennessee basketball right now. We've got we got good football, and if we're going to talk about basketball, we need to be talking about Kentucky or or Vanderbilt, in my opinion. Well, you said we've got some good football. We'll, we'll hit one thing of news, and then we'll get right into a little recap. And we'll we'll keep the recap shorter than normal. Um, but we'll also, uh, before we get into the rest of the news, uh, tell you where you can find us. If you're listening to us, uh, you're probably listening to us either on Stitcher. Thank you so much for uh, joining us there. Or on iTunes. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, rate us. Help us out there. Get us some good comments. Uh, also, we're on secsrt.com. That's our website. You can find um, Twitter updates at SECSRT or on Facebook at SEC Sports Roundtable. Um, and also YouTube, uh, if you want to watch a video of us just sitting around uh, doing this conversation, uh, as Brett waves to you there, that's a good mark for us uh, video-wise so we can make sure this audio gets edited correctly when the wave happens there. But uh, you can also find that YouTube channel, and that's SECSRT. Uh, as well. So lots of ways that you can find us, communicate with us. Uh, The website's always under construction, so um, bear with us as we keep making improvements on that. Uh, It's a a one-man web design shop, and and he has no web design experience. So, uh, you know, bear with that gentleman. Uh, He's he's learning, but uh, he's doing his best he can. But uh, we will get into the news. Uh, There's one other piece of football news we'll talk about. And uh, that comes from the state below Tennessee and, and right out of Athens mm. in Georgia. And I think it's just some convenient timing that uh, the test results for three of the running backs. And, and A little weed smoking going down in uh, Athens, right? Is that, did they announce what it's it was? It's drug test. I mean, let's just let's hope it's well, that. LSU, it one game. So LSU, it was not marijuana. It was like imitation. It was, yeah, it was synthetic it was fake marijuana. marijuana. Yeah, fake marijuana. What, what is that? I mean, does anybody... Chad, you know what synthetic marijuana is? <laughs> I guess I don't that's know what you're trying to imply, but that's I would the field turf of, uh, of, of, <laughs> of field marijuana turf. is what I would, I would artificial think. Artificial surface. Artificial surface marijuana. Brought to you by field turf. Yeah. But now, how many running backs does Georgia have on the roster? I should have looked that up. I know, I, well, they're going to have, I mean, but, in college football, you're going to have plenty of guys on the roster, but they, they suspended three of them. Well, and one of them got injured. Too. Yeah, yeah, one so of them got injured. So I can't even give you a name, but. I mean, in the paper this last week, they've got one guy listed at tailback that will be available this week that even has a carry this year. Um, again, pitiful research on my part, but couldn't give you a name. But, I mean, they've even talked about a couple defensive backs getting some work uh, at the running back position. But, you know, they're playing 
a, a New, pretty terrible team. So yeah. I don't think I think I could probably play running back for them this week, and they'd be fine. But that's kind of what I said. It came in a great yeah. convenient time because it's what New Mexico State. Yeah. I think that's the story. I mean, that's the story more than anything else. Is it, it's it's very fishy that that it comes out right after. You know, they they've had some tough games in the SEC, and they just had their their marquee matchup. The the cocktail party in Jacksonville against Florida. They have that game, and then right after it, oh, well, we just decided to do a drug test. I mean, which it they announced it on Monday, I believe. So no, it was before that. It was it was Sunday. It, I believe it so, was. So yeah. the drug test was before the game, and conveniently, the the results didn't come back till after it. So you know, the thing about the SEC is all schools can have their own drug testing policy. I, I think Tennessee's. I know it used to be. I think it still is. Is like a four strike and you're out policy which was a pretty lenient one um, compared to most of the other teams so it's not like the other schools don't have a lenient drug policy but it's just it's convenient that that their one kind of cupcake probably homecoming game uh, is the one where where they don't really need running backs and uh, and it's not I don't think it's going to affect them really but now maybe that's more into when they decided to do the test as opposed to who they were playing you know they they planned the test to be before um, a game where they knew they would have very little uh, effect if they yeah, had players out. I'm as more likely to, to say I'm more likely to say that they're the I wouldn't say cheating, but the the scandal would be that they decide to suspend them at a certain time. Other than them, uh, the school not testing, you know, testing when they think that if they think they're going to fail. I mean, that, that's a problem if they're like, well, we're going to wait to test them before this game. I think they just randomly test them and they just decided to to wait to suspend them for this game. Do we know who? When we talk about doing random drug tests in, in college sports, I, I don't know, so I'm really asking you guys if you know. Who, who who does that? Is that the school itself? Is that a an outside party? Is that the no, football I'm sure team? It's, I'm sure it's Do, the coaching staff. I mean, so – They hold the cup? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so do you have to have – I mean, is, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I mean, what if you just know that 90% of your team's toking it up every day? I mean, do you just not have drug tests then or – if, 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 the, sure if the school it's, itself, I'm sure it's set up by the athletic department somehow. I'm not sure. I, I don't think the coaching staff has any. I'm not sure if they have any say. Hey, well, let's do it here. Right. I mean, they may. I would guess that the NCAA has mandated that there is random drug testing, and then when it's administered and how many times would be up to the athletic department and the coaching staff. Right. Well, would y'all agree that? You know, this is not a condonement of smoking marijuana, but no. I, I mean, I think I don't know percentages, but I mean, you know, 18 to 22 year old. Athletes, I don't. I mean, apparently, a lot of them like to smoke marijuana. I mean, there's a weekly suspension, you know, coming out. It seems like, or a weekly, you know, LSU had their deal a couple of weeks ago. Here's three, you know, just kind of funny. I don't know if they just <laughs> drug test by position or if, or if all three <laughs> all right, running backs, backs in here. I, together. If, if they do, I, I guarantee they're going to change that policy. <laughs> right, but you know, I mean, I, it's it, it's a story, obviously, when 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 you know, all of a sudden a guy fourth on the depth chart that with one carry all year as you're starting running back. Um, but I don't think it's any surprise that college age kids are smoking some weed and, and, and it's like I said, it, it does seem to it it pops up weekly that, but, that teams are suspending guys, you know, for that. And uh I will you know, say that fourth string running back has got to be happy he didn't go to that party. I would think so. <laughs> then they'd be starting up you know he probably didn't go to the party just didn't get tested. Maybe like Georgia would be going it. five wide the whole the whole week, I guess. Yeah. So whole game. Which I think they I think they win if they line up with if they never put a running back, if they never ran the ball, I still think they win this one easily. Do they have a fullback to throw in that package? I mean I'm sure they do. They, sure, he yeah. could carry some. I right. Mean, they're going to pull a, a couple plays out there. That New Mexico State is bad, bad, bad. I, I, you know, I haven't followed them really, but but I have <laughs> noticed. You know, I look at the spreads every week, and, and they are consistently, you know, thirty to forty point underdogs in a lot. <laughs> and of I'll games tell you what's winter. worse. I think they're the best team in New Mexico in, in the University of New Mexico, like the worst team. And I don't know what they're doing out in New Mexico to grow football players, but Ole Miss not, is getting close though. Much. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> they're once they're hundred and sixteenth and. In uh, I think offensive production. So, <laughs> well, we'll see. We got Ole Miss got a good one coming up this week. We'll you might want to hold your tongue on Ole Miss right, right now, no, Shane. No. I might come back and bite me. You're right. Yeah. No, I, back to what Brett said. I don't want to condone. Uh, well, I I really don't care if football players are smoking weed. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't. I don't. It, I mean, it just doesn't matter to me. I don't for, think it. For that matter, do you care if the general public smokes weed? No, I, I, yeah. I, I don't. I've. I've I, I'm That's not going to get into a political. You know, <laughs> talking about you know whether marijuana should be 
illegal or not, but I don't think it. It's it's almost like it's very similar to drinking. I think when people get, I think it's almost becoming so common uh, that a very high percentage is doing it, and that's why that's why you have ridiculous. I mean, how about I mean, it's a drug testing policy where. You're not off the team until four times. It doesn't mean you know you smoke yeah. weed four times. It's you get tested you get and you get four caught times. four times. And guys like uh, like for Tennessee, I mean, I just I talk about them all the time because that's what I know. Lamarcus Coker, who uh, was from this area, was from Antioch, um, very promising first two years at Tennessee, and and got just kicked off the team for for failing four drug tests. Uh, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. And that was his what junior year, right before his junior year. Well, Jansen Jackson, same thing. I mean, yeah. here, a guy didn't even get to play a game in his junior year and uh, <laughs> obviously couldn't Jansen stay Jackson off also, of it uh, Also arm robbed some people his freshman year, so. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> moving, moving on. What, what's next, Shane? What's next? Shane, let's talk about uh, – you want to talk a little bit about Missouri – and the, I mean, it looks like it looks like Missouri is going to be that 14th team in the SEC next year. We know Texas A&M, and we you know we've had a lot of speculation. I know Missouri was one of them, yeah. but it, it seems. I mean, the, the vote hasn't come down, but uh, it looks like they're going to be moving to the SEC. Well, I mean, the SEC's website actually at one point had the announcement of some sort, uh, some sort of press release on oh, their website. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, it, you it, think that guy's the same one that's been uh, working on our website? <laughs> he could very well be. <laughs> If he is, he's got some good graphics. I wonder if he could give um, get some on ours. But uh, you know, so I mean, I, it it's got to be a done deal. It's just a matter of when it happens. Is it going to happen in time to happen for the 2012 season or not? Yeah. And and I think it's going to come down to the politics of the Big 12 and when they when they Missouri leaves there. I, I think you're going to see. Obviously, like Drew said, we know Texas A&M will be there next year. I think you'll see Missouri too. Um, I think the SEC will make it work, whatever that means. Uh, paying early exit fees. They they don't want to do a thirteen team conference. Not, not in my opinion. I don't even think they want to mess with that schedule for one year and what that would do to different rivalries. And and I mean, you'd be talking unbalanced conference schedules. Some teams playing seven, some teams playing eight. You know, so I, I, I'm saying you're going to see Texas A&M and Missouri both in the Southeastern Conference by middle of next summer. And so, and just so we can get some concrete things to talk about, because we've talked about speculation of what that's going to be. Is that good for football? Is it bad? Instead of talking about like that, instead of talking about that, the, the a couple options are looking, I mean, those are both Western teams. Um, they're further West than any team in the SEC right now. But Houston's in the big, uh, Houston's in the big East, right? Are they Houston's one of the ones that are going to are, are they just joining? They, Aren't they joining football only? Didn't that announce? Yeah, I think they – but like SMU's joining the Big East as well. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 hey, here's a – I'm just talking about East-West here. Yeah, Boise State. It looks like Boise State might be in the in the Big East. This is the first yeah. time I've heard their name. And, um, and I think that one's going to be football and – I, 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 who cares? It's, it that, changes so the much. The Big East has 47 basketball teams, so – um, and they're all and they're pretty you much all good seven too. games to win their. That's why UConn won that tournament last year was so ridiculous. It's such a Big East basketball is awesome too, guys. It is good. If y'all want to start a Big East uh, basketball <laughs> podcast, I'd have to bone up on some of my knowledge. But it's it's so fun to watch that Big East tournament's awesome. But back to back to the SEC, uh, a couple different options that we've heard thrown out there. Uh, it sounds like Texas A and M is going to be in the West. They were kind of you know first come first serve. So the options uh, are Missouri. To the to the east, and uh, one that's been thrown out there is Auburn getting moved to the east. Y'all have y'all heard that as well? I, th- I think initially people had said geographically that made the most sense. Auburn was the easternmost team, and without going into a ton of debate about it, we, we kind of kicked it around before we got on, uh, you know, started going here. That you start messing with with rivalries with teams that have been rivalries for seventy and eighty years, and. I think the easiest thing, which would make the least geographical sense, but the most sense, would be just stick Missouri in the east. You keep the west together, you add Texas A&M to that group. You keep the east together, you add Missouri to that group. So, I mean, while, again, it doesn't make any geographical sense, as Shane just said, you got teams from the – <laughs> the great Midwest, uh, or excuse me, the great what's that called? The South Northwest. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, Boise, Idaho. When I think Big East, you know, Boise usually doesn't pop in my mind. But you know, I, I think they got to. In my opinion, I, I'd be more for doing what makes the most sense and preserving those rivalries. And I think just sticking Missouri in the East and A and M in the West probably makes the most sense. And then to just me. make Missouri, Texas A and M, make them a, yes, a they'd be rival. their their natural rival. Yes, I think that makes the most sense. Chad, you got anything? 
I mean, I just I just agree with y'all. I think send one to one uh, side, the other one to the other, make them the rivalry game, and not mess with all these other ones. I, you know, I, I agree with that. It's that's the simplest thing to do, but is uh, Slive and the rest of the uh, SEC ADs looking further in the future as to when they go to 16 teams and, and not have to readjust it a second time. So maybe this Auburn move could be a more long, you know, long down the road kind of thing, two or three years down the road, they're going to have an extra two teams in. And they probably have a good idea who they'd like to have. So maybe are they thinking, you know, if we go on and make this move now, it'll save us from a big cluster on down the road. See, I think you're on to something, Shane, but I think a little bit differently. I think if they are going, if they plan on going to 16 teams, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, forget the, the regional stuff. Let's go ahead and put Missouri on a one- or two-year basis in the east, and then when you add your two other teams, then we'll go to four different uh, divisions. If they move Auburn over there, if they make a move that drastic, I think they really might be looking at staying at 14 teams for a while. So I don't think I don't think they're going to move Auburn to the East because they have been such a traditional uh, Western team. Unless unless that's going to be a more permanent move. Well, and I even heard of going to ridiculous rumor when, when you talk about 16. I mean, I'd seen I've seen Auburn and Alabama going to the East. If you were going to bring in like an Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, I mean, I think it's you know Texas has been offered. Twice now they ain't, they're not coming. They, they don't think I don't think they want any part of the SEC, um, and, and I doubt I doubt it'll happen. You know that quickly, but you know you talk about something really crazy. You know you, you shift Auburn and Alabama East, A and M, Missouri, like an Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, and all of a sudden you got your sixteen and you're good to go. So um, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it plays out over the course of the next you know eight or nine months. But uh, I still would be in the uh, in, in the camp that says. Like like Chad mentioned there at the end, you just put one in the east, one in the west of these new groups, and you keep as much of the rivalries together as you can. And also, are they going to go to a nine game SEC schedule? Uh, keep it at that's the that's yeah, I th- the, keep it at eight. Or? I think that's the consensus in Rumorville. I mean, yeah, I think I they mean, would go to a nine and then a three uh, a three game non conference uh, schedule. I mean, some of these schools have. I mean, I know just because I'm a Vandy fan, I follow. They got co- non conference contracts to like 2018 that they're going to have to try to get out of. Tennessee can tell you they, you know, just like they got out of that North Carolina game, there are outs in all these games. You just have to pay a little bit of money, I believe. Yeah, and and the the losers on that's not going to be like an Oregon LSU. It's going to be Middle Tennessee State or New Mexico State. And you know there's going to be some, even if you're talking about keeping the same number of conference games, you know there's going to be some flip-flopping of schedules because when Texas A&M comes in, Every team in the West and a couple teams in the East are all going to have to somehow get Texas A&M on their schedule. And like you said, Vanderbilt's schedule is done for next year. But if they have to add a Texas A&M, somebody's got to get bumped. Right. Yeah, and I, I it's know not going to be an SEC. I game. know coaches. I, I know if you poll the coaches, none of them want to play nine SEC games. You know that that, that of course they're not going to be the ones voting. It'll be presidents and um, you know of the schools themselves and ads or whatever the case may be. But I know coaches would be a opposed to going to it. I mean, it's already brutal enough when you play eight games in this conference. Nine games is... Are there any other conferences that have nine games? I know like the the Pac-10, when they used to be ten, they they played nine, but they didn't have a... They did not have a conference championship at that point, because they played every team each year. But is there any others that play that many? I would imagine. I don't don't know off the top of my head, though, who it is. I I know there's a... We're talking football, but how does a 14-team SEC basketball tournament work? Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they'd Brett, you can out. figure this out. Brett's the king of I am the guru of bracketology. Brackets, so. um, because Mike Slive did say that everybody would still be participating in the tournament. So, so they wouldn't do a situation where, like, two didn't participate. You, it just – it'd have to be a couple a couple more buys. I don't know. Now I guess what we have, four buys. Um you know, there'd be a way to figure it out. I, I, like I said, give me five minutes. I'd sketch that on paper here. If I quit talking for a while, that's what I'm doing. But um, it, it could be done. Um, but we'd have, to, I'd have to look at it and see how it go. But you've also got, uh, I mean, and the SEC's re- redid their rankings. I mean, there's no East West winners. It's it's right. one through twelve right Which now. It's about time because that was. I'll tell you what you do here. You've got uh, ten. the top ten teams are in the tournament, and you'd have the bottom four teams from the SEC kind of do a play-in and uh, and then reseed after that. What like, do you think, like Brett? On that, like on that Wednesday? I don't even think you'd reseed. I think you just have two, yeah. two games on Wednesday, 
and then you'd beat it. Then you'd beat your twelve teams. Yeah, and then from there, so the bottom four would have to play an extra game. Uh, correct. Where the where the top four would still get a buy and not play till Friday. So the, the four teams. That's kind of how the Big East does it. Yeah, the, it's very That's similar right. to the Big East. It's just different numbers. <laughs> right. I want to say, guys, that this last uh, last minute and a half, where we uh, try to figure out the how you would seed a fourteen team SEC basketball tournament. I'm going to go ahead and vote that for worst two minutes of the SEC SRT podcast. Yeah. You're never going to get that back. Is yeah, that <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's got to be bad. Uh, so you need bad me, radio. you need me to find out how many people <laughs> dropped the podcast after listening to that segment. We got great listeners, man. They're probably saying, "Where the hell is the LSU Alabama talk?" <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. Shout out to can we go? Shout out to uh, what is it, Vol Daddy on uh, on YouTube? Yeah, Vol Daddy. To us. Hello. You, you had some uh, you had some comments to him on uh, one of our. YouTube. So, Vol Daddy, whoever you are, thanks for listening, buddy. There you go. And if you listen and comment, you might get your name mentioned on the SEC Sports you'd be, Roundtable you'd be podcast. Semi famous. <clears throat> kind of like us. Yeah. <laughs> We're not even semi. <laughs> All right. So, what do we want to do, Shane? We want to review a little bit about last week, just it's kind of short review. Yeah. I mean, as late as it is in the week, let's, let's look at the games and we'll, uh, we'll start with. Uh, you know the games that go real quick. We're not going to spend our our normal in depth coverage that we normally do with last week's games. But uh, uh, you know, let's start with the easy one: Mississippi State at Kentucky. Uh, you know, last week I, I was giving Kentucky a lot of praise. I thought they had a better better chance. Um, at times they were you know competitive. Uh, they had some good turnovers in the first half. Just weren't able to convert those into points. I think they got a couple field goals off of it. Um, and, and and that was really what caused them, you know, caused the difference right there is is not being able to convert and take advantage of those turnovers. Uh, I know that they, there's an injury update there. Uh, the quarterback is is injured with an ankle sprain, so their freshman quarterback Maxwell Smith is going to get his first start um, as a Kentucky Wildcat this week. But uh, that's you know. Yeah, I don't think there's much in this except for my. I was going to say make that same point. The kind of a change into the guard. We were pretty high. On, I know we were, we were very high on Chris Ralph, and a lot of people were. And it looked like Tyler uh, Tyler Russell was the much more effective quarterback yep. uh, in that game, even though uh, Ralph did have a touchdown, well, a couple touchdown runs. Um, and so they might be finding something there at the quarterback position, kind of a rotation. Russell throws the ball. He's more the main quarterback, and then Ralph comes in, which I think works better than having the running quarterback as your main option and then bringing a throwing quarterback in. And then, like you said, uh, Maxwell Smith kind of taking over. He threw the ball 33 times, uh, which is good for him. Didn't didn't do a lot with the 33 throws, but uh, – but it's just that's good experience to get for a freshman. Yeah, and, and it, it unfortunately it happened with an injury. You know, it wasn't just performance from Newton. He is. But I think that was I think that was close to happening anyway. I mean, yeah, it's not was, working with Newton. Go ahead and get the freshman in there and try to get him time. That's kind of what you know Tennessee did with with their quarterback. It wasn't working with who they had. So and it wasn't working with the freshman quarterback either. Apparently, but well, let's just go on and close the book on Kentucky and talk about the South Carolina Tennessee game. You know, it's a, a pretty low scoring affair considering on both sides of the ball. Uh, yeah, I mean, South Carolina's got a very good defense, and uh, I don't think they have a very good offense right now. They Offense was hurt by not having Lattimore. Uh, Their running back, Wilds, I, th- I was kind of impressed with him. I thought he did good. He looked like a good running back. Um, and Spurrier did what he needed to do to win the game. Uh, it was it was a – what do we have, a 7-3 game at the half? Yeah. And, uh, and then right at the very beginning, Tennessee has an interception. Uh, Cornerback, I don't just don't Prentice Wagner. I have no idea why he didn't just run on the sideline like every other player in the history of the sport does and beat the quarterback to the end zone. Instead, he cuts it across the field, makes a good play, gets down to the three. And you'd be, usually you'd say, okay, our our defensive back took us to the three. Tennessee's going to go in there, take the lead, make this a game. They run the ball the first play, they lose three yards. Second play, uh, their freshman quarterback Justin Worley throws a horrible pass, and it kind of started unraveling from there. Uh, interception, and then had a 20-play drive that took almost 12 minutes. And uh, I, this is funny because I was watching the game by myself, as I tend to do now in my sad, sad Tennessee life. <laughs> and uh, I just before that I said, because the play before is when uh, Shaw threw the interception, I said, they don't need to throw the ball. Just absolutely hand it off on that shotgun inside kind of draw play to Wilds. Hand it off. They're getting five yards every time. And what they do, they march down the field – Five yards at a time. I mean, twenty plays and a hundred yards. They're getting less than, you know. There's not. There weren't many plays that were over five yards, and uh, and marched down and scored. And then that was kind of ball game. That, that took the air out of Tennessee cells. Right. I just want to give two quick things on that game. Um, I thought Tennessee's defense played well. Um, you know, the, I, I know South Carolina's not the same offense without Lattimore, but 
You know, it's still a top 15 team. Um, take away – I know you can't take it away, but they gave up that one, like Drew said, 12-minute drive. But you give up 14 points right there. Uh, you know, if you'd ask Dooley that, hey, before the game starts, you're going to give up 14 to South Carolina. He's taking that in a heartbeat. And, and to give you where Tennessee's offense is right now, they started a drive at South Carolina's 25. They started a drive at South Carolina's 18. They started a drive at South Carolina's 2, and they scored three points. And I think yeah, that sums it up. Red zone. I, th- I think okay. that sums it up pretty nicely. I mean, three drives started inside the 25 of South Carolina, and they score three. So they're just not good enough on offense right now to beat anybody. Tyler Bray, brace your thumb up and just come on back, please, because the other two guys are terrible. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited about Worley getting a chance to redeem himself. I was pretty, pretty down on on Worley after that performance. I don't, I don't think he looked that good, but you know, you have to give him some credit. Tyler Bray's first start. Uh, of his career came against Memphis, a horrible Memphis team, even though, albeit it was on the road. Matt Sims' first college start came against Brett's alma mater, UT Martin, uh, which was a horrible football team. And and Justin Worley's first start goes against a top 10 defensive team and a top 15 overall team. So uh, not a good situation to be in. And I look for him to rebound against uh, Chad's alma mater, MTSU. <laughs> yeah. If you're a Tennessee fan, I just don't think you can be so down on Worley. I mean, this last year at this time, he's playing high school football. Um, Dominating high school football. A couple things on South Carolina. That offense is just its just not the same without Lattimore. I felt sorry for Alshon Jeffrey. I know he was – I mean, he didn't look happy the entire game. I don't know how many passes he got thrown his way, but it wasn't many. So, I think he's going to feel the, feel the um, burden of Lattimore being gone. And I know that I know that South Carolina made a quarterback change, but Connor Shaw, I mean, I think he's a better option than Garcia to get a little st- stability back there. But he ain't no world beater, so uh, I don't think they're just pumped about him. So yeah. they're they're going to have to rely on uh, Marcus Lattimore. Oh wait a second, he's gone. They're relying on a guy that started the season fifth string. So here's the unbelievable thing: is we're talking bad about South Carolina. And once again, they are seven and one, and you know a top what ten, twelve team top in the country. 10. That's unbelievable. Ninth in the country. Tenth for BCS, though. That's right. Yeah. Unbelievable. Now, let me let me say this, and tell me if I, I'm wrong in my thinking, but would you say Shawner, Shaw is better? Shawner, uh, would you think that Shaw is better between the ears, you know, head case-wise, than Lattimore? But Lattimore has – not, not Lattimore. <laughs> I was like, I don't, come on, why are you throwing Lattimore to the bus for, man? <laughs> Cause, God, I hurt his knee, dude. Because, you know, those knees, it affects your head. Um Yes, I'd have to say he's – Yes, I mean, Garcia. Garcia got suspended 57 times over his nine-year career. But Garcia Carolina. has more talent. Well, yeah. And he oh, can yeah. drink better so, than yeah. Connor Shaw, apparently. And he's a, he's a good public peer. So uh, don't play <laughs> quarters with Garcia. Right. Yeah. Or do. Okay, he drinks a lot. Maybe he loses quarters all the time. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know Connor Shaw was as good of a runner as he was. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, he might not have rushed for 30 yards, and I'll sound like an idiot. but 64 yards. Every touchdown. time I looked up, he was scrambling out of the pocket for 15 yards and getting out of bounds with nobody touching him. So, you know, I, I think as we move on from that game, uh, I, I think he's a serviceable quarterback. He's not going to win the Heisman like Drew's boy from Florida uh, is pegged to do. But at the same time, um, <laughs> he, he's a serviceable quarterback. And you know, speaking of uh, speaking of Florida, Shane, is that okay for me to lead into yeah, that one? That's a great segue. Go right ahead. You know, I, 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 I get, can't steal the thunder. Go. I, I watched very little football last weekend. Uh, still in recovery mode from uh, the old Vegas trip. And at the same Drew. time, had uh, had had my kids' sports going on, but I obviously saw a Tennessee game and saw a good bit of the of the Georgia Florida game. And I mean, the first ten minutes, first quarter of that game, you know, I thought Florida looked like the better team. And as uh, um, that game wore on, Georgia, you know, they just made more plays and um, and got a, a big time victory for Mark Drick. I, I really ha- had heard several places that even though Georgia turned it around, that that was a could have been a must win for him and uh you know a good victory that puts them uh right there for the east i mean we're all talking and going to be talking about this this game uh coming up in the west with alabama and lsu but you know right now coming down to georgia and south carolina who's going to who's going to represent the east in the championship game what was weird about that game is just georgia's just seemed to have no faith in their kicker you know they scored twice on fourth down and touchdown passes in the end zone well did you see the misses he had though yeah, but that guy coming into the to the year was supposed to be one of the tops in the conference. Uh, yeah, Blair Walsh is supposed to be. Uh, yeah, he's got got the the leg and the distance, but something's not, not the accuracy. Yeah, <laughs> or, or it's it's in his head right now. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it, when you're missing those kind of uh, you know field goals. So he he was missing less than thirty yards. 
you don't miss those on a consistent basis to have the talent he has unless it's just somewhere up, upstairs right now. You know, he needs to go see a psychologist or something. Get sports sports psychologist. Those are that's a budding field right now. I think should be. Uh, Brantley, you know, I, I still love him. No, I don't. I don't even really like him. Uh, I just thought he was gonna be better than he is. Uh, Dimps, I, yeah, I think that he added a little bit. Uh, this was, you know, Brantley coming back and Dimps coming back. I still don't think that Dimps is a hundred percent. No, uh, I mean that guy is the fastest guy in the country, and and he kind of showed it on that ninety-nine yard touchdown. But even then, return. he wasn't nearly up to speed as what he no. could have been. So, so think no, about I think he's eighty percent, and I think that's what I think. I think Florida is still a hurt team and a young team. Yeah. Florida's a very, very young team, so uh, it comes down to Aaron Murray made some big plays, and uh, I think he's kind of set himself up to be one of the better, uh, the better quarterbacks in the league. So we'll we'll talk more about Murray coming up because they got a big matchup. They do. Let's go. Uh, let's cover this um, other not as good game, the Mississippi Auburn game. Mississippi lost. I mean, <laughs> what else do you need to say? I mean, are, are they really that bad? I mean, I think they were. They have found some offense. It seems like you know. I don't. I yeah, I mean, they looked. Good. I didn't see as much of that game, but I saw a lot of the uh, the Ole Miss Arkansas game. Uh, I may or may not have uh, put a bet, a couple bets on Arkansas and lost those. So uh, that was a. They looked good. They're all, exactly like Chats. I'm sorry to interrupt, man. Go ahead. Talk about their offense because that's what I wanted. Oh to yeah, you're, say. you're fine. Go ahead. No, I just I agree with you. Randall Mackey, that's Brett's boy. Um, Breakout player of the year, boys. I think boys. that they have a little stability finally at quarterback. Um, they found out who they want to go with. And, and yeah, I mean, it's nobody's going to just say he set the world on fire with 157 yards and, and a touchdown. But, uh, you know, that, that's better than what they had. At least they have somebody back there and they're not, they're not rotating guys in and not knowing who they're going to play. They're, uh, they're playing a little better, but I still don't think Houston is there when the year ends. I I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. Gus Malzahn will be the next head coach at Ole Miss. I hear – yeah. I can't disagree with that. I think, uh, you know, last week was a good test for Malzahn, except that, you know, he was – it was at Auburn. So, maybe they had some, some mini interviews right there um, before the game. But if if they lose this week, will it happen before the season ends? I, I don't think so. And I don't know if they can win as much faith as I'd like to have in the Wildcats. I yeah. think they let him play the year out. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know what good it's going to do to fire him with three weeks left or four weeks left. So, I think he finishes the year out. And like Chad said, I I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see. The only reason I can see it happening is maybe, you know, they go in that Mississippi State game. You know, that's a huge game for that yeah. fan base, and they roll and beat beat Mississippi State, and then people may be him, yeah. people may be thinking, ah, let's go ahead and try to see if he can get it turned around or. Or not, and so you're saying not even giving that chance. I'm saying that if they fired him, that would be the that'd be the the only reason I would think of why they wouldn't let him finish the year. It's, it's a good reason because you win the Egg Bowl. That's that in Huge. itself in the state of Mississippi is big. Um, let's see. Did, I guess the last game is the cocktail. No, we talked about that. We got Vandy oh. in Arkansas that I'm no Chad's going to want to. That's right. If we can get in some tissues before we start talking about this, but I mean that. That was a tough one. I mean, and, and Chad, let's let's go to you on it because I know you were there and sat through it. And um, that's a, a loss, obviously. And it's not not just the, the last kick. I mean, the last kick kind of you know kicks you in the gut a little bit. But you know that that, that game was was it, really Vandy's. He missed the gut. I, yeah, uh, <laughs> before that, I've sat in that stadium many years and watched that watch us lose about every way possible. But we were up 28-20, got first and goal, fixing to go up 15 with about 11 minutes left. Uh, Zach Stacy fumbles. Arkansas picks it up, runs it back for a touchdown. You're like, Jesus, here we go again. <laughs> well, then we get the ball back, and uh, Arkansas has a pick, running it into the end zone. The guy fumbles at the one. Vandy recovers, gets the ball back. So you're like, well, maybe this is this is not going to kill us right here. And then Arkansas kicks a field goal, and you're thinking – there's no way we're going to get down the field, much less get to the 10-yard line and have two shots at the end zone, and then our kicker misses a 27-yarder, and just all you can do is laugh out loud. <laughs> what, did your, what were your thoughts about the uh, – I, I thought that uh, they did a great job moving the ball down the field, um, and uh, Jordan Rogers looked really good. A couple of just pinpoint passes, and uh, who was it? Uh, 
Jordan Matthews. Jordan Matthews. Jordan Matthews. Matthews unbelievable catches. A one-handed catch on the sideline, and then dropped one. Uh, Jordan Rogers dropped one right in the right in the basket uh, up on, on the other sideline. The play before that, and they get down there, and you're thinking, get in field goal range, get in field goal range, get in field goal range, and they they do that with plenty of time left. And then I didn't really like their play calling at that point. What What do you think about that, Chad? Um, I didn't. I didn't mind the play calling. I think the first – they had a pass to the, the tight end in the end zone where, I mean, Rodgers put it where either t- the tight end was going to catch it or it was going to be out of bounds. So let me – can I interject real quick? Did they go for the field goal on third down? No, it was fourth. It was fourth? Yeah. Okay. On the third down play, he was kind of getting rushed and just threw it away quick. That's right. That's yeah. right. Hit the hit the wall. The only thing I could have, have seen him doing is after the first down play, maybe running back-to-back quarterback draws, just, just give him a run, maybe a run pass option. Because he still had a timeout left. If he gets tackled, plus you could put it, try to put it in the middle of the field because the <laughs> kicker kick it straight anyway. So, <laughs> one one thing I think Vandy fans can take some heart in, and, and, and I don't think you know I, I've said this before, and I, I I think Chad would agree. You know, I never felt like I don't think anybody thought there was a conspiracy to keep Jordan Rogers out of the lineup. I mean, I you know the three coaching staffs basically, or three different people played Larry Smith, and I do think that. Of the two, I think Jordan Rogers is the right play, though, and you know should have come earlier, maybe. But I think I think Vandy fans have to be at least a little happy with the fact that I mean, I, I thought he looked like a, a competent quarterback. He's not going to be all SEC, but he's not he's not terrible. <laughs> if that's, could maybe it, that's the best you can say right now. Could it have been his shoulder? Is that why he didn't get the start earlier? I don't think so. I, I think it's just. I think Jordan Rodgers is probably just a gamer. You know, he's one of those guys that's not going to wow you in practice, but he gets, he's going to get in a game situation and, and play well. And I think Larry Smith's a great practice player and a terrible game player. So, Tim Tebow. Could be. <laughs> Larry Smith, uh, Larry Smith. you know, he got, what, two and a half years off that one bowl win, right? Well, I, I, I was a big Larry Smith backer. Uh, until probably a couple of weeks ago, when they <laughs> until finally, Jordan Rogers when got they in finally there. made the switch. But I'm going to give Larry Smith credit. He is a captain, and he is you know he's always on the sideline cheering on the team. He I mean, he could have quit on them really when he got benched, but um, he he hasn't. He's probably thankful, man. He's getting beat up too much. <laughs> That's all our game, Shaner. All right. Well, we'll we'll look at the week ahead. Do we want to? We'll go in, and we haven't really talked about how we want to do this, but we need to make our picks. So we'll just make our picks and and kind of go into it. And I think there's two games coming up this week that we really want to spend a little time uh, talking about, and that's going to be more than just saying who we think is going to win. So, uh, Drew, you've got those picks in front of you. But before we get to those, now that we're at the pick section, Brett, you want to go over your bragging ability? Shane, I would, again, uh, appreciate the the chance to get to do this. Um, you know, if you check our website out when it's working at uh, www secsrt.com um several of us that have been on the podcast uh you know obviously shane and drew every every time uh but some other guys uh we, we do our sec picks and just a quick recap of where we are in the season right now and i, and I think still a, a very impressive uh you know run by really really five of the seven guys uh hate to bang on drew and trent there but uh shane last week goes three and two uh, he, he's well over 537, 25 and one. Uh, Drew with the two and three mark last week. Uh, he's now at 30, 32 and one. So a good week here. He could he can bust that 500 mark again. Uh, yours truly, uh, the Greek Brett Young, uh, four and one week. Uh, you know, 44, 18 and one. Um, just you know, that's pretty damn good. Uh, Chad with an impressive week, five and zero. Uh, he's up to thirty-seven, twenty-five and one, tied with Shane uh, in second spot. Uh, Blair Smiley in a, uh, another another winning week, three and two. He is also tied with uh, Shane and Chad at thirty-seven, twenty-five and one. Uh, Mark Wisner a three and two week. He is at thirty-six, twenty-six and one. And the cellar dweller, uh, my friend, everybody's friend, Trent Satterfield. He had a four and one week. Uh, he is still still struggling mightily. Though. He is now at twenty eight, thirty four, and one. So, uh, five of our seven panel members uh, with, with 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 well above five hundred records. Uh, if we can get Drew, uh, just have a good week here, and, and Trent to go about ten and zero the next two weeks, we could we could have uh, seven guys winning y'all some money out there. 
I'll, I'll, I'll give props to Chad too because a five and zero is pretty impressive. Even though you know, <laughs> five and zero is pretty good, but I, not when you don't have anything on the on the game. So. <laughs> Yeah. Where was that five and zero at two weeks ago, buddy? Yeah. Uh, if my math skills are correct, you know, just doing old school addition, uh, that puts us as a group two hundred and forty nine, one eighty two, and seven. So what is that? Forty nine plus eighteen, looking at sixty sixty six somewhere, sixty seven games above five hundred. I'd say that's, that's pretty, pretty impressive, man. Yeah. If we could just kick Drew and Trent out, we'd be. Well, yeah, I mean, that you say mark, that, so. but I mean, I'm two games below. 500, no, you, you've I mean. done fine, man. I mean, and I've had a, I've, I've had, and one of those games was uh, we didn't have a spread. Shouldn't have counted. I picked Jacksonville to beat <laughs> Kentucky. I mean, that was your own fault. You could. And then for some reason, I thought I thought what we were going to do is go find what the real spread was going to be. They never put one, and so we kept it as a pick 'em. Which <laughs> I'll be honest, I just thought it'd be a closer game. You know, trying to be funny on the podcast, and it hurts me in this, and I get made fun of well, for it. Give yourself that win. You're. 31, 31, and 1. Yeah, 31, 31, <laughs> and 1, man. 500, treading water. Yep. So, Shane, well, let's, here's how I think we should do it. Let's kind of go through – we'll go through uh, some of the games and do our picks, and let's save a, you know, a good portion, and we'll talk about a couple of the big games, and we'll kind of break it down. And, and uh, guys, we're not uh, retarded or silly or anything. Uh, we've talked about the LSU-Alabama game uh, the last seven weeks, so – uh, we're we're going to spend a good amount of time on that, and and uh, and that's we're kind of saving that as the cherry on top. So let's uh, let's start real quick. Um, uh, Shane, kick us off your pick on Ole Miss, Kentucky uh, at Kentucky. It's a pick 'em. You know, I, Kentucky has such a hard time scoring. Um, you know, aside from the Jacksonville State game two weeks ago, uh, you know they just they have issues getting into the end zone. Uh, they, their defense has still stepped up, made a few good big plays. Um, you know, you guys alluded to earlier that Ole Miss is, has fi- found a way to start scoring some points. Um, but I'm going to stick with the blue. Uh, it's in Commonwealth. Uh, it's an important game for them. Uh, I, think, I think it can – I think if they lose to Ole Miss that there's a good chance that Joker's job does start to become in jeopardy. That, that swell of conversation is heating up up there in Lexington. Um, and, and losing to an Ole Miss team that I think they've lost their last 11 SEC games – um, doesn't bode well for for Joker Phillips and the Kentucky Wildcats. So, uh, you know, for that reason alone, I think I'm going to go with it. I think the quarterback uh, Smith's got some stuff to prove as a freshman. Um, I know that uh, you know he's going to come out strong. So I'm going to take the Cats. Brent, yeah, I don't have a lot of solid analysis here. I, I, I think, in my opinion, right now, Ole Miss is the the lesser of two evils. Uh, so I, I'm going to pick Ole Miss to. To go into Kentucky, and uh, I don't think it'll be a pretty game. Um, you know, wouldn't surprise me to see a, you know, 16-14, 21-20 type deal. But I'm, I'm going to pick Ole Miss to to win that game. Chad, I'm also going to take Ole Miss to win that game. Um, I don't know what time the game starts. I don't know what channel it's on. So, but I think it's on PBS. <laughs> High def though. Channel eight. And I know Shane was talking about uh, Joker Phillips' job status. I, I watched a little bit of the Mississippi State game, and I, I don't know if their attendance – I don't know what their attendance figures, but there was definitely a lot of uh, – The official attendance was over 55,000. Mm. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they were definitely like, not – That's I'm about like the there. Titans announcing their 198th straight sellout, and there With was a lot of 35,000 people there. Yeah, I'm guessing day. it was somewhere in the, the lower 40s, 42, 45, from, from everything I can understand. Uh, and that kickoff is going to be at uh, 3.30. That's the ESPNU game. So – Tune in to that then. Drew, what do you got on that game? And that, Who do you like? That's uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'm taking Ole Miss. I think they're better than Kentucky. I think Kentucky's bad. I think Ole Miss is bad. I think Kentucky's a little worse. Uh, all right, let's go to the next game. Uh, I'm going to skip down to Georgia without all their running backs um, playing at home against New Mexico State. Georgia minus 33. Brett? I'm picking New Mexico State. Uh, I just I like the 33 points and – you know, I have no clue about them. I know they're awful. Uh, I know we've joked about it. I think it's got to hurt you a little bit when you jump from your best running back to your fourth or fifth best. So, I think Georgia wins the game handily, but I, I think I think New Mexico State covers. I'm going to take uh, New Mexico State as well for the simple fact that I like Mark, Mark Rick, but I hate his defensive coordinator. So, that's really the only reason I'm picking uh, New Mexico State. 
Uh, I want to be different. I got to try to make the comeback. I'm going to pass Brett somehow. <laughs> I'm only uh, 14 games behind, uh, so we got to chip away one at a time. I'm taking Georgia. I think they're going to have to throw the ball more so they don't have running backs. And when you're playing a bad team and you're throwing the ball more, I think you're going to score more points. It actually helps them, Georgia, big time. I agree. I'm going this side of the tables in, in agreement. I think Georgia's, um, like you said, going to have to air it out. Uh, it's going to be a great game for Aaron Murray to, to really work on his accuracy and you know get some some short dumps. Uh, and the <laughs> <laughs> you I've always been dumps. a fan of the short dumps, guys. I like long and dumps. long dumps too. <laughs> or dump the ball off short, Absolutely. whatever it's going to take. Uh, you know, I hope there's a, a port of John or something close by if that's the case. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean. You you see that happen all the time um, in that West Coast spread offense, though that that you you don't have to have a running game to game to be very successful and put up a lot of points. This so. portion of the SEC SR, SRT podcast brought to you by Cracked Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, he's named our podcast. Uh, we kicked off with you, Brett. Let's go, <laughs> Brett. I'm doing something crazy, man. I want you to break this down a little bit because it is your. Uh, your favorite team, Mississippi State, minus 32, playing at home against the, what, Skyhawks of uh, UT Martin? It, I didn't know – I didn't realize we had a big game this week. But uh, <laughs> You going to be there? I probably won't. I, I went to one U- – no, it's not true. I went to several UT Martin games. I will say very quickly my highlight was – uh, UT Martin beat Bethel ninety-seven to seven, and we booed them the last two possessions because they just tried to. They could have got a hundred and just ran it and punted it the last two possessions. So you're part of a, a, a probably crowd of about six hundred that booed a college team that could for, for only winning. <laughs> we had four and, six. and a half minutes left to get over a hundred, which I thought would have been pretty cool. But um, so Mississippi State and UT Martin thirty-two and a half. Oh, uh, Mississippi State. I mean UT Martin is not good. Uh, shout out to. Uh, Tyler Eady, a former Smyrna Bulldog, who I believe starts somewhere on the offensive line, probably weighs about 240. So I'm going to say, uh, you know, Mississippi State wins by 50 points. Chad, what do you got? I'm sure uh, Tyler Eady agrees that uh, <laughs> Mississippi State will cover that. Probably about, uh, They'll probably win by 50, maybe 60. Does uh, – does does he follow y'all on Twitter? He does. Throw, throw a tweet out there to him real quick. See what he thinks. Uh, that'd be that'd be SECSRT breaking news. Talk to a player that's about to play in the game. Uh, I agree. I think I think Mississippi State rolls big time. I, I'm in agreement as well. I don't think there's a lot of discussion needs to be done. Where'd you get that spread, by the way? Isn't that a one double A game? I think Shane made it up. All right, I like it. Uh, let's go to uh, Chad. Start us off with uh, Florida. Um, Playing at home against Vandy, they're nine and a half point favorites. I'm definitely taking the Commodores. Um, I'm not going to go out on a limb like I did last week and book that Vanderbilt was going to beat Arkansas, but I do I do think they cover the nine and a half, and I wouldn't be surprised if they won the game. Uh, I, this is horrible, man. I, I I actually do. I root for them. I actually got mad at the TV uh, when – not at the TV, but I was mad in front of the TV when, when they lost that game. Uh, last week against Arkansas, but I'm taking Florida. I just I've watched too many Vandy uh, Vandy games, and uh, I'm, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the Gators. Uh, John Brantley lights them up. You know it is at the swamp, and that's what scares me. I mean, it's always even though it's a even though it's a banged up Florida, and they're they're still not a, a, a team that you think of when you think of Florida football. It's still a tough place to play down there in Gainesville. But I, I'm going to get on the Doors bandwagon and and, and think that they can. Pull a little magic out. I don't know if they can get the win, but I think they'll cover the spread. So I'm going to take your doors. Thank you, Shane. Oh, You're right. well, I'm going to balance it out. Um, no, man, I need you to pick the other no, way. I, I can. I, I I picked them on my on my sheet for the week. I I I, I hope I'm wrong. You know, for for Chad's sake, for sure. For for Vandy fans out there, I, I just think they're. I think Vandy's due for kind of a letdown. Um, <laughs> Chad doesn't agree. Uh, I I just think I. I th- I still think Florida's a decent team. I mean, they've got too much talent. Uh, the four games they've lost have come against four good teams. They're not losing just to goofballs out there. So, um, if it was 14, I'd, I'd really think about it. But I, I just don't think nine and a half is enough points. And, again, Chad, I, I will be cheering for Vandy. I hope they win. But I think Florida covers that. And, honestly, I think it's a, I think it's a letdown week for Vandy. I think it's a 21-point game. The 11-21 start time is an advantage for the doors. Yep. Vandy comes out early and plays well. Why Why is that? They eat good breakfast. It's easier, it, it, it's easier to play during the day at the Swamp than it is at night. 
Plus, Florida's a big-time party school. Hopefully, they'll be uh, partying on I love when people say stuff like that. <laughs> Man, we got them early. I hope they're partying late. I mean, I think they party late all the time, and I don't think it makes a difference. Definitely think it makes a difference. Except for Arkansas. Arkansas doesn't play good early. Uh, now, all right. Now, I mean, let me say one thing real quick about that. Um, I mean, could Florida also be in a letdown mode? Because after last week's loss – I mean, their chances of, of winning the East is pretty much gone for. So they don't have a whole lot to play for except maybe the Music City Bowl or the Liberty Bowl. You know, How many games is Florida on a four-game four four uh, four four losing streak, right? They're four and four or they're four and four. And they're on, I think they're on a four-game losing streak, right? Correct. I mean, yeah. I don't look at who they've lost to. Yeah. You know, they've lost to Georgia. They've lost to um, LSU. LSU, Alabama, uh, and who else? Uh, Anyone? Uh, Bueller. I'm looking it up. I don't know. But they lost. It wasn't a, a clown Auburn? team. They did they lose to Auburn at Auburn? I don't know. We're just throwing yeah, straws out there. That sounds right. But regardless, I, I think both teams are. You know, I, I don't disagree with what Shane's saying. I, I just think it comes down to where you got two teams without a ton to play for right now, and I just think Florida's a better team. Well, but Vandy's got a bowl game to play for, and that to. Even a Music City Bowl for Vandy is a big deal. Or, True. But or I just don't think I – mean, A Liberty Bowl or a Papa John's Bowl or, you know, the Great Out Great so, West Bowl or whatever it is. I mean, they'll take going, anything. You're going down to Florida. You're not going to Ole Miss. You're not going to Kentucky. I, just think, I think it's asking a lot of them to go down there and win that game. We believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't think – I mean, I think you can say that – say what you will about this coaching staff at Vanderbilt. They, they get ready to play – you know, Elon. You know, they're they're up for they were up for that Army game. I didn't think they were going to be as good. You know, I bet against them in that Army game in uh, in Vegas, and that didn't turn out too too good for me. Um, but no, I, I think that I I understand the whole letdown game. I think they might. I think the only chance it's a letdown not because Florida thinks they've got Vanderbilt and they can beat them. I think it's because they got up so much for that uh, for that Georgia game and lost. Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be a letdown. I think that Florida is going to. I think Florida's going to win the game. Uh, well, let's let's jump over to Tennessee. Um, Tennessee's playing at home. Uh, finally, finally get a little reprieve from their schedule. They're also on a. They're on, are they on a four game losing streak, Brett? They've lost a. They lost every game in October, didn't they? <laughs> yes, but I mean, uh, every game in October was against Georgia, South Carolina, LSU, and Alabama. Yeah, so. they, they beat Buffalo to go three and one actually on October first. So I guess they yes. did win one game in October. But can't shut they, us out in October, baby. They then lost four in a row. And uh, and they start off uh, they start off their November uh, schedule with uh, MTSU. They are twenty and a half point uh, twenty and a half point favorites in that game. I think they roll in this game. Uh, Worley's going to get the start at quarterback again. And uh, uh, Tennessee has to watch out for the, the one thing I think they need to watch out for is uh, MTSU has a pretty good passing attack. I know that the the quarterback you know his name off the top of your head, Chad uh, Gilmore Gilmore yeah. something like that. He- yeah, it's Kilmore, Gilmore, something like that. He, he threw for 400 yards in the Kilgore, Troy. Kilgore, actually. Kilgore, something like that. Something. Uh, he threw for 400 yards in the Troy game, and he threw for over 300 in the Purdue game. So uh, I don't think this is a really, really bad MTSU team. I think they can uh, throw the ball, and I think that you know that's what they're going to try to do against a, uh, a young secondary, which every part of Tennessee's team is young. But uh, I think that Tennessee's going to throw it on them, try to establish a little run, win by about 34. Yeah, if Tennessee can't run the ball this week, then he just they should suspend their three running backs. Go tell them to smoke weed because I mean you got to be able to run the ball in MTSU. I don't think Tennessee is going to. I mean, I don't think you can expect Worley to come out there and just throw for three hundred yards. I mean, I, I think this has got to be a game where Tennessee Worley will throw for three hundred yards. Too. No chance. Well, this, this has got to be a game where Tennessee rushes for two hundred fifty yards. You know if. What, what they, why not? Well, I just don't know. I mean, what about Tennessee? I mean, Tennessee's played Buffalo. They've played Cincinnati, which Cincinnati's a little better team. They haven't come close to 200. I mean, they're not a 250-yard rushing type team. I know, but they don't. They have a guy right now that can't throw the ball. Why can Worley not throw it? I'll, I'll be. I'd he made love, good passes. I mean, they were playing. He made South one Carolina. good pass. Derek Rogers dropped it, which is another thing we could talk about. But not. I mean, honestly, if I wasn't a, if I wasn't a big Tennessee fan, I'd pick MTSU to cover. I just well, the, think Tennessee's terrible right now. I'm, I've lost my patience with them. Yes, they're losing the teams that are that are better than them, but you know, I know that I'm, I'm just going backwards in time. I, I'm I'm ready for the team that uh, won ten games every year, not the team that uh, hoped to go to the friggin' Music City Bowl. But good news for you as far as Worley being bad at quarterback, as you say, Dooley's already said that or has proven that he's not afraid to pull him. 
So, I mean, if it's getting to that situation, you're going to throw Sims back in there? I think they're both awful. I mean, I, I think – I think uh, what, that's why they've got to run for 250 yards. I'm pulling so. up Twitter from uh, – No, I, I saw was, him. Make, I was jokingly ripping Worley, said I was done with him after the first two drives. <laughs> and, you're, and you're sitting there going, Worley might be pretty good, man. I think we got something here. Worley now. made a couple nice passes. Was it the interception on the goal line or was it the uh, – I don't know. I just I, – I have I think I've just gotten a little cynical here, you know, watching ineptitude – at Tennessee, and you shake your head, but I mean, are, are you? Is Worley? Is he for Heisman next year? Now? <laughs> no, I don't think he's going to play next year. I think we. I think there will be a Heisman Trophy uh, wearing the big orange next year, and it's Tyler Bray. Uh, I think yeah. that uh, y'all can laugh all you want, but if y'all if y'all don't think Tyler Bray's a good quarterback, you're crazy. Uh, Tennessee wins. Tennessee covers, but they're still not very good. Worley throws for three hundred. Shane, what do you think? What's the spread again? I was looking up the – It doesn't, doesn't matter, Shane. We know you're picking, right? <laughs> 21 the, points. The spread, the spread is one, Tennessee by one, or 20 and a half. You know, as much as I want to take Middle Tennessee, they've not, they're have not. they not the same Middle Tennessee team. I mean, I don't know what their record is this year, but, you know, I think they lost to Western Kentucky. I think you know? they're two and five. So, and I lost to Western who didn't have a single win last year in Division One, and the season before that maybe – didn't either you know that it's not a good mtsu team uh i I don't see that they're going to be able to put up the points against tennessee and i'm gonna as much as it pains me to say Say this say it i take mtsu not to cover (laughs) all right (laughs) tennessee you want to sing rocky top or chad make it a make it a foursome here pick against your alma mater um I have one MTSU shirt, and I got it <laughs> from the PE department at MTSU. And Saturday night, I will be wearing that <laughs> PE shirt, um, going crazy for the Big Blue. Uh, MTSU covers. I think it's going to be a lot closer than any of you people think. Um, Tennessee will win the game, but it'll be it'll be closer. Well, one quick shout out to. Uh, Coach Willie Taggart and the West, they've won four in a row up at Western Kentucky. And you're correct, they they went about zero and forty. It felt like yeah. there for a couple of years, but they're. I heard him on a sports talk show this morning, chit chatting, and they they've uh, Western's won four in a row. So got the tops in the right direction. Go go Bowling Green. Maybe uh, Ball Daddy's from there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you wow. from, Ball Daddy? Let us know. Vashon, our our only person commenting on our YouTube's there. Thanks. No, I, I love that guy. So maybe he lives there. Um, <laughs> all right, see. with a name like Vol Daddy, do you actually think he lives in Bowling Green, Kentucky? All right, instead of instead of going around the table and picking this, let's just let's throw this game out there. We got a big game uh, coming up this week. Uh, actually, I have two of them, and I'm going to go to the the one that I consider the lesser. Uh, we've got South Carolina going to Arkansas. That's two top ten teams in the BCS. Is that correct, Shane? That is correct. Number eight and number ten. Number eight, number ten. That, I mean, that doesn't happen very often. That'd be where game day would normally go. Um, if it wasn't for a for they're going, another, they're game. coming to Knoxville this week. Is I that think right? so. I think they're going to. I think they're going to Florida Vandy. Uh, but uh, you've got a game where Arkansas is favored by five. Um, Brad, give us a little. What's your insight on this game? You, you know, I, I think if this game's played a month ago, I'm probably taking South Carolina. But um, uh, just up front, I think Arkansas is better right now than South Carolina is. Uh, part of that will be just my analysis of watching South Carolina play last week. I mean, obviously. I think you got to give props to South Carolina's defense, but they're going to have a lot tougher time stopping Arkansas than they did stopping Tennessee last week. Um, I think on the offensive side, uh, I just think Arkansas is better than South Carolina. I do think South Carolina can score on Arkansas, um, but you know, from my vantage point, you know, being at home, uh, being a, a good offense like Arkansas has, and South Carolina not having their you know best offensive player in Lattimore. Uh, you know, I, I just look at it as Arkansas is the better team, and, and I'm taking them to cover those points. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I think about this game, uh, I agree with you, Brett. Uh, two two teams that are in the top ten, both with just one loss. I normally would get a little more excited about it, but I, I just don't think either team is playing uh, as good as they can right now. Arkansas, of course, their one loss came against Alabama where they got – Beat pretty handily, and uh, but the, what I'm concerned about is the last two games Arkansas hadn't looked good. They almost got beat by an Ole Miss team that's not very good, um, and and really sh- trailed most of that game, and should have got beat by a Vanderbilt team. Uh, now both of those games were on the road, and uh, and now they get to play at home. 
the one thing that kind of saves it for me that I think Arkansas is going to win this game is the problem with Arkansas is their defense. Uh, and uh, I'm not too afraid of – uh, South Carolina's offense. So I think Arkansas's offense is still, has still played good. Um, I just don't think as bad as their defense has played, I just don't think that South Carolina team is a team that can throw a lot of points on people. I mean, they're running that Benny Wilds character who had a good, who had a good game, but, uh, you know, you kind of know what you got with him. He's not going to have a 300-yard rushing game or anything. And uh, Connor Shaw, I just, I'm not afraid of him, his arm. So uh, I do think that uh, Arkansas is going to be able to sling the ball around. A tough, tough defense to play against. But um, I think they'll they'll put up enough points to, to to beat and cover that spread. Now this is a this is the natural rivalry East-West game for those each of those teams, is it not? This is because they've played each other the last eleven years. So well, yeah, that would be the yeah because they came into the conference together. Yeah, when, so, when they correct. went ten to twelve. So yes, these are the you know of, of those eleven games, five have been decided by nine points or less. Um, so and do you know to top that off, you know South Carolina is three and zero in SEC road games. They've never been four and zero in in the SEC. So you know those are two little stats out there as far as. Line makers would always look at those two things um, when when they're looking at this. Um, I also think that you know I'm I've been high on Arkansas all year round. Uh, I've not gotten off of that bandwagon. I still think they're a very very good team. Um, and sometimes very good teams need to have a couple bad games and still win. Uh, and I, and they've had those the last two weeks. Um, so they've set themselves up to have uh, still have a very good season. Uh, it's it's the end of. It can really put a dent in South Carolina's chances for the East title um, if they lose. And South Carolina, you know, they still have a shot. And we'll say, I mean, there's still – you're saying there's a chance uh, that they could compete still in the West only with one loss. Uh, after, you know, next week that can that – can, or after Saturday's other game that we're going to talk about, that can really determine that. Um, but uh, you've got those things going against it. I really like Arkansas's offense, and and I rambled here, and I don't think I've made any sense at all through through my thought process. But I like Arkansas a lot. <laughs> yeah, you love Arkansas. I do. Chad, what do you think about this game? Not much insight into it, but I think Arkansas wins. I think Arkansas wins by double digits. Um, I know I saw Arkansas should have lost uh, last week to Vandy, and then but then I watched South Carolina play Saturday night, and I was just definitely not impressed with them. So I think Arkansas being at home. Uh, wins that game, wins it by 10. One thing I want to say that just real quick, I think, you know, I don't, I don't help Shane's points the right thing, but I think echo Shane point, Shane's points. You know, good teams find ways to win games when they don't play well. Yeah, and, exactly. And, I, and I, would, I would agree that the last two weeks, you know, Arkansas struggled against Ole Miss. Uh, you know, struggled against Vandy, even though, you know, you got to give credit to both those teams for making them struggle. But when it got down to it, they won two SEC games on the road, yeah. and uh, you know, good teams sometimes have to. You, you just you take those wins, and, and you know, on the road in the SEC, I don't care who you're playing, you'll take them and you go on home. So the worst team in the SEC is still a tough battle on the road. Absolutely. So I, I think you got to give Arkansas credit for for winning both those games the last two weeks when they weren't playing their best. Guys, I think this game probably deserves a little more time, but uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm done talking about anything else. Uh, we have done a we've done a horrible job of uh, trying to. Contain build, our build excitement, the suspense. Um, but man, we need to devote a little bit of time to uh, what your, a lot mo- of people your movie picks, right? Yeah, to my <laughs> movie picks. I really like. Uh, I don't even know a movie. Harold Boy Two. Harold and Kumar. Is that what's hot? Harold your list? and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay. Wasn't yeah. that the old one? Christmas Vacation with Harold and Kumar. Christmas and, Vacation's a good movie. And Clark Griswold. All right, hey, enough of this, man. Game of the Century coming up, uh, and it really, uh, it's really one of the biggest games I can remember. I, you know, the only other game. You know, when I think back, uh, Florida, Florida State in 96, you remember that, their first game, one and two, and they actually played again uh, for the championship. Um, I'm sure there's there's going to be plenty of others, one versus two, that have happened. Uh, I, the Alabama-Florida game in the SEC championship a couple years ago when Tebow was a senior, they were both undefeated. That was a huge game. And right now we've got the undisputed number one team in the country and the undisputed number two. 1A team in the country. Uh, Alabama, LSU, two undefeated teams, both of them just head and shoulders above everybody they played so far. Uh, LSU, has LSU anybody within double digits still? I mean, they haven't had a, a game, no. no, a close game. I don't know, but Alabama probably hadn't had much 
uh, of any close games. They've, well, they've handled everybody they've played. I can't, I can't even think what Alabama's closest game was. But, you know, I've, I, both these teams have, you know, I, hats off to Oklahoma State, hats off to Stanford, but those – Y'all back on up because I mean these two teams are the best teams in the country right now. Well, let's Stanford talk lost, about. Or no, they won last week against yeah. USC in overtime. With a uh, and n- not to go off too far off the SEC, but uh, that was another one that Vegas didn't like because they they ended up going for n- the double overtime. Yeah, h- had to go to <laughs> had to go for two. They made it and then um, what a fumble recovery in the end zone. Yeah. Um, so they they won by eight to cover. Only chance they could cover that game was uh, a win in double overtime or, or greater, or if they'd gone for two. So now you're like if you were, overtime. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So it, it's crazy what you do if you had to put a hundred dollars. I have you seen that stat where if you put a hundred dollars on Stanford and let it ride, um, they've covered the spread like the some, last like nine something ridiculous. I think it was the last fourteen games. Yeah. It'd be like four hundred and some. Like, I need to know that stat. We yeah. stay, we pick Stanford in our weekly picks, and mm-hmm. I'm not picking. I think I picked first of all. I picked against them this week, and yeah. I picked them to lose outright. Yeah. So they've covered either it was fourteen or nineteen straight games. And if you delayed a hundred dollars and let it ride, you'd be like four hundred thousand and some odd dollars, four hundred thirty thousand dollars or something ridiculous. Compounding math. Uh, Guys, I'll give you my, my take on this Alabama LSU game. Well, let me give you a stat real give quick me a before, stat. You, before you do that. You were talking about how you know each of LSU and Alabama can score at will. Um, you know, one of the things I'm looking at here, LSU scores on 49 and a half percent of its offensive drives. Alabama scores on 48 percent of its drives. So almost every other time they touch the ball, they're scoring. And, and you know, it's. I don't know if that stat will take a hit. I'd like to see what that stat becomes after this week's game because I don't think it's going to be that high, that that big of a scoring differential. I don't think they're both going to be able to score like that the way they have. Sorry. I just want to throw that out. No, I mean, my, my thoughts, uh, you know, I kind of have looked at it. I think Alabama's got an advantage in the running game. I think Trent Richardson uh, is better than the running backs that, uh, that LSU has. Um, I, like, I like A.J. McCarron a little bit better as a big-time playmaker. Uh, as as far as a playmaker over uh, Jared Lee, um, I, you know it's tough. I I think that the athletics edge, you know, when you talk about like athletic plays and and uh, having you know like that that Reuben Randall or uh, or uh, what's the Jordan Jefferson, you know, maybe coming in and and running the ball. I think LSU has the advantage. You look at defense. Um, I think they're pretty similar on defense. Uh, so what I have to break this down to is I think Nick Saban's a better coach. Um, I think that playing at home is going to be big for Alabama. Uh, and I think Alabama's a little bit better than, than LSU. So my pick in this game, uh, and, and I'm going to reserve the right to change this. I mean, we can put it on the website. I think Alabama's going to win that game. It's I think it's a three-and-a-half point spread, but I'm throwing spreads out the window when we're picking this game. Um, I, I'm taking Alabama. I think it's a – I think it's going to be a, a good game, but I think – and I, this is one of those things I could be completely wrong, but I think Alabama is going to win that. I think they have a little more talent overall and a little better coaching than LSU. You, I, I, I'll say – I'll just start off and say that I'm picking LSU. Um, you've got some valid points. Uh, I, I think what this game is going to come down to is a turnover. And if you look at both teams – I think, but combined, they've only turned the ball over five times the entire season. Um, you know, and then we're how many games in? We're eight games in on each for 16 games, five turnovers between two teams. It's going to come down to a turnover for score. Is going to be the, <clears throat> is going to be the difference in the ball game, and you know, it's it's going to come down to chance at that point. And who's who's going to be able to do that? You can't really figure that thing out. But both teams are so evenly matched. I just think that. Luck's going to fall LSU's way. It, it's they've they've been road tested. They've had some tough matches. They've had some top twenty five opponents that they've really had to come in and prove themselves. And they've done a stellar job doing that. And I think LSU's not even going to need the points. They're going to win outright. I just hope that this game lives up to the hype. You know, uh, ESPN. Aaron, uh, that's a great point. I mean, all week ESPN. Right. Aaron Andrews riding with Les Miles to the to the office uh, this morning. Uh, what's his name? Rinaldi. Is that his name? Yeah, Ron I think Ronaldi. so. Ride, riding with Nick Saban. To, to Nick Saban Mike. got the short end of that stick, didn't he? <laughs> riding, uh, jamming to Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What's on your CD player? Like we care who's what's on his CD player. Oh, it's right. Michael Jackson. Yay. Uh, Did but, you not? And Saban, Saban's listening to Michael Jackson? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I didn't see that coming. But uh, before we 
started the podcast. Uh, ESPN was on that college game day's already there. There's people everywhere already. It's Thursday night. They're forty class hours kids. before the game. Um, I think I agree. I agree with Shane about the game is going to come down to turnovers. You know, which quarterback is going to make is going to be smart enough to throw the ball away instead of trying to fit it somewhere where, where they can't make the throw. Uh, I think LSU is is a lot faster on defense, just with their linebackers and secondary. I think they got a little bit of advantage in the uh, punt return game with the uh, what's his name the. Honey Matthew, Badger. Matthew. Honey Badger, yeah. Uh, I think they got an advantage there. I, I think LSU's going to win. I don't know why. I just think I think Les Miles has got God on his side again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Nick Saban maybe maybe the better coach, but I think Les Miles is just you know he just wins just some crazy ways. I think I think they go down there and and win the game. I also hope that it's a good enough game where it lives up to the hype. Uh, Stanford loses, Oklahoma State loses, and they play again in about <laughs> two months. I'll tell you, here's, I'm changing my uh, my way that's going to happen. Uh, Alabama's going to be up by six, um, going to go for a handoff. Uh, Matthew's going to going to make the tackle, force a fumble. He's going to scoop it. He's going to be running in. He's going to start taunting about the 25. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Points taken off the board. Uh, Jared Lee throws an interception. Very next play, Alabama wins. You'd be the happiest man. Well, well he's he deserves. You're still not a good a Matthew fan. Uh, he's weed smoking Tonner. <laughs> Synthetic stuff though. Synthetic weed smoking uh, garbage trash talker. Well, Matt, what's your thoughts? I, I, I'll give you this. I, I'm I'm not going to disagree with Drew. When you hear game of the century stuff, you always kind of giggle. But first of all, we're talking about a century, and it's what tenth, eleventh year, however they look at that. So th- this is the game of the century in college football so far. And like Chad said, it is uh, they're treating it like a national championship or even like a Super Bowl. If you go to ESPN.com, it's the countdowns up on the top right hand corner. You know, two days and this many hours, and um, you know, it's all over ESPN. It's all over you know all the all the different sports channels. And you know, I too hope that we we see a good game. Um, you know, if you look at the spreads, which we obviously we take a lot of time on these podcasts and, and talk about spreads and who's covering and. You know, most of the time in, in college football, you know, you, you'll hear you're going to get three to five points simply based on the home team. Yeah. And this spread falls in that three to five range. I, I think we've got two teams that are very, very, very evenly matched. I think it's two of the best college defenses I've, I've ever seen. Um, I don't think either offense is led by, you know, there's not a Heisman caliber maybe even an all-SEC caliber quarterback. But you've got quarterbacks that are going to keep you in the game. They're going to let their playmakers make the plays. Um, I would agree with Drew that I think Trent Richardson's the most dynamic offensive player on either team. Um, I think he's the uh, – I mean, he is a horse. He is hard to bring down. Uh, that LSU defense is going to hit him, and they're going to hit him a lot. But I still think that uh, Richardson will get his yards. Um for a very simple reason, and if the game was at LSU, I'm going to tell you I'd pick LSU. But uh, I think for no other reason than two evenly matched teams, uh, two good coaches, both different but but good in their own right. I mean, um, I'm picking Alabama to win the game um, just because it's in Alabama. No, no other reason than that. I'll be honest. I know Drew said don't worry about the spread. Um, I've picked Alabama to win all week when we're talking to people, but like on our – sheet that we play with I think it's a four and a half point spread I picked LSU to cover you know so I'm looking at that 20 to 17 21 17 type game I think you're going to see a classic game um, I'm hoping it lives up to the hype and I think we're in for a treat on Saturday night but I'm picking Alabama to win I know we can talk about you know the X's and O's but and you said this and I, I made I made a point to this everybody talks about game of the century biggest game biggest game why why is the the Florida Alabama SEC championship of 2009 not get more press it was two 12 and0 teams it was a Florida team that was coming off a national championship with Tim Tebow who is possibly, arguably, the greatest college football player ever to play the game. A great defense. Um, they had one tough game. They had a tough game against uh, LSU that they won by about 10 that game. And they had that Arkansas game where they should have won and the refs kind of, you know, uh, kind of questionable calls at the end of it. You had an Alabama team that had, um, that had Mark Ingram, had a Heisman Trophy winner on it, had Trent Richardson who played uh, in that game, Julio Jones, 
uh, an incredible receiver, another great defense, and a team that went on to win the national championship. Uh, two 12 0 teams playing that late in the season. Why is this game bigger than that game? Because it's right now. I mean, I doubt two years ago people weren't. I mean, I don't, I'm like you, I don't remember it being pumped up that much, but it doesn't make this game sound near as important if people said, you know, the second biggest game in the last two years is coming to you Saturday night. I, you know, I, I heard somebody today say that, uh, uh, just some random scout, NFL scout, said there. I mean, there could be 50 NFL players on the field Saturday night. You know, literally 50 NFL players. I well, mean, that's 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 ridiculous. Also, could it be the f- simple fact that you know I don't think either either team was expected at the beginning of the season to compete for the national championship. Were they? I mean. I think that you you threw them in the mix. Uh, definitely Alabama, just because of their pedigree and. But from day one, they we, weren't a dominant preseason about favorite. Two, two years ago, or this, this year, year, this year, two years ago, uh, Florida or Florida was they had the highest percentage of number one votes preseason of any team in the history of the in game. In 2009? But this year, no. I mean, it's kind of up in the air. It was Oregon. A lot of people thought of Oregon. A lot of people thought of Oklahoma and. Uh, and see, that's one. That's one difference. Is this year? I mean, everybody thought that it was going to be LSU. Or Alabama to compete for the national championship from from day one of you know preseason uh, of spring camp uh, you know it was that was the talk so from the beginning everybody was talking about these two teams are the teams to beat in the SEC and and in the country and I don't think you had that conversation back in '09. Now whether that makes this game more important or not, you know to go 12 and 0 in, in the SEC regardless if you're playing in the East or West is an unbelievable feat. And, I, I have, think, and to have two teams do it is an incredible feat. So I think Brett's uh, Brett's statement is exactly right. It's because it's right now and it sells more tickets and it gets more people to watch is why it's being pumped up. I have no illusions that this is a bigger game than than that game of 2009. I just don't think I don't think you're going to get a bigger game than that one was. I, I think this year, kind of touching on both of y'all's points, I think when LSU beat Oregon like they beat them, you know LSU yeah. was thought as a top five team for sure. But, I mean, that one win catapulted them into that top two or three thought. And I think – y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I think Oklahoma was the fairly consensus number one preseason in both sides. They were. Correct. And, um, you know, I know us as a, as a biased <laughs> SEC podcast have pumped up these two teams from really the first or second week or whenever we started getting this thing going. But I, I just think if you look at what the teams have done, LSU especially, I mean, I – I, I kind of agree with Drew. I mean, for whatever reason, I don't know why I think I'm good enough to think that Alabama's a two- or three-point better team, but I just get the feeling that Alabama's a slightly better team. Maybe it, maybe it's because I know deep down Saban's probably not going to throw a behind-the-back to the kicker on a fourth and eight at the 50-yard line late in the game. But then again, maybe that's what makes LSU so, but uh, he's, so fun to watch, you know. But he's done his share of trick plays this year. I mean, right, I mean, but at the same fourth, time, if he, he, fourth in, in Penn State, he went what fourth and the fake punt on fourth and what I forgot how much it was fourth I think and the, eight or I something. Think the difference is, you know, Alabama's doing that against Penn State, where they that game was never just really in in that in was early, and and LSU was doing was it against early. Florida to kick a tying field goal in the fourth quarter, and instead throws it over his head and bounces it to a <laughs> to a to a kicker. Yeah, but that was early in the second quarter and. And that momentum shifted for Alabama after that game. It was still pretty close. I mean, Penn State was hanging with them, and, and I think that was a big momentum shift in that I game. Think if, and, if, and Alabama, I, I can't remember which game, but they did it again just a couple weeks ago in an SEC opponent, and the tide shifted then. And, and they went for it on fourth down with a trick play. If Alabama played Penn State 75 times, Alabama would beat Penn State 75 times. So, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. At that moment, it was probably a big momentum shifter. But I don't think I don't think Nick Saban's felt the pressure of, like, man, we got to get this play or we're in trouble for this game. Yeah, I, right. I, I touch on those points. I don't think Saban is – I don't know if conservative is the right word. I, he's probably not as conservative as most people think he is. I would agree, Shane. He's done some uh, – you know, going for on some fourth downs when you don't think you should – um, but I think when you put him in there with Les Miles, who we can quickly come up with probably four or five just where you're going, what are you doing type yeah. plays, and hell, they all work. I mean, he does these ridiculous, just stupid – I mean, I just call them stupid plays sometimes, stupid concepts. You know, it's still hard for me as a Tennessee fan, even though he got away with it, to just – I mean, th- that year where he had about three st- games of just unbelievably the clock. mismanagement of the clock – you know, that, was that two years ago? They literally were talking about firing him. I mean, you know, just he's a moron. He's gonna and now I'm let him go you, to Michigan. He can he can uh, 
you know, he, he's he's the governor of, of Louisiana if he wants to be. So, um, you know, yeah, I don't think Saban's going to be just so straight laced. I, I guess my point would be if I had to bet on who's going to make the first, wow, that was a gutsy call, I think it's going to be LSU. I, I do think LSU's got to do uh, – I think they're going to have to make some type of – I don't know if it's a trick play. I don't know if it's a block punt. Uh, I think they're going to have to force some type of play you don't see every day. Whereas I feel like if you just line up, smash at each other, I just think Alabama's a slightly better team. And if they, if, if you were going to say who's going to make the first, wow, that was a stupid play, uh, I think I'd pick LSU right, as well. Right, right, me one. too, yeah. So maybe it just comes down to when the stupid call happens, does it work or not? Well – We'll know in, in a little less than 48 hours. I mean, pretty close to that. By now, it's going to be the game's, game's wrapped. So by the Thank time you to, um, to CBS and the SEC for figuring a way to get this game on prime time. I think that's important. It's huge. Uh, I didn't want, you know, I kind of, I, I think it loses a little luster if it's a 2.30 game. Is this yeah. still going to be Vern Lundquist and yes. Gary Danielson? Yeah. So we we get Gary Danielson and, and then, and then the, a the guy, guy that, that his probably best will. job ever was the announcer in Happy Gilmore. Correct. <laughs> so you're I so, like old Vern. I just you're you're high on Vern, aren't you? I think he was good about fifteen to twenty years ago. He's gonna he's gonna call somebody the wrong name. The over under is you know four, four and a half. So how cool would it be if Gus Johnson was announcing? Uh, it'd be unbelievable. <laughs> Down the sideline, <laughs> the first play of the game. Uh, no <gasps> doubt. Well, as we close at every SEC Sports Roundtable, we'll just throw it around the room, open mic, whatever, whatever's on your mind. Drew, I'll, sounds like I'll, you want to start off? I'll jump off, man. Uh, I'm excited about this game. I want to give a quick uh, Vegas recap. Uh, I'm not going to get into any, any detailed stories or anything. But no sordid details, right? No, I can't do that. Um, but stayed at the Mirage, had a good time. I want to th- say thank you to uh, one of our other podcasters, Dean Fulton, hooked it up. Uh, he's the he's the big wig with us, got us some uh, uh, comp room and, and, and some, some free meals. It was wonderful. Uh, I want to – Tout myself. I had a heck of a time at the pie gal tables. Did pretty good there. Um, craps tables. I was up a little bit. And uh, at the roulette wheel, which is a sucker bet most of the time, I got it done at roulette. I was the only one to kind of get it done at roulette. Um, my sports betting was pretty good. I came out, you know, with the plane ticket, the room, the food. I actually made money over a, on a five day trip. Um, is it a five day? About a four, about a four day, four, four or five, trip. four or five day trip. Um, came out up money. I came home with more than I than I left with. Didn't win a lot, but that's not the kind of gambler I am. I just you know try to do it for more entertainment. Um, shout out to Chad Caldwell and uh, and uh, another one of our buddies, John Mooneyham. They defended uh, America's pride mm-hmm. and won a, a beer pong game against uh, the Germans. <laughs> um, did a great job there. It was a friendly. It was a it was a friendly. What beer were you drinking? Were you ha- did you have to drink Heineken and they had to drink Budweiser? I don't. I couldn't even tell you what I was. <laughs> that would have been much. At, at that point, there ain't no chance that Chad could have told you what he was drinking. But uh, that was a good night. Um, shout out to O'Shea's. Uh, it's a, a little joint um, that, that we hear is going to be demolished by next June. Outdoor casino, wonderful place. But uh, had a great time. Uh, missed you guys on the podcast, but uh, uh, I hope to do it again next year. Um, you can follow me at Twitter at, at @drewyoung20, and um, if I if you do follow me, and I had any any crazy tweets from a couple weekends ago, you know why. Chad, I'll say a little bit about Vegas. Uh, I played roulette pretty much every day, at least one session, and hit one number total. <laughs> so I will definitely uh, probably be staying away from that game and. Just want to say how great I fi- I felt to be an American that night that we beat the Germans <laughs> when I uh, when I stood hand hand in hand singing our national anthem in front in front of these two guys who were very cool cool guys. But it, was it was a friendly. It, yeah, it was a it was a very good uh, match. Um, Vandy this weekend. I think, I'm not going to book the win, but I think we do play them close. Uh, go MTSU, and uh, I hope the LSU Alabama game is as great as. It's talk. It's being talked about. And before you go, Brad, I just, you know, if if uh, the two guys that I don't know your name that uh, challenged me and my brother Brett Young to a game of beer pong, if you're out there listening for some reason, I just want to let you know I didn't say it then because I I don't know why, but I think you cheated. Um, 
I don't like the way you played. Uh, I think you put more beer in your cups, which you think would be a disadvantage, but you made our cups too light. You never made the, the balls in the cups. You just knocked them over with fastballs from your side of the table, and uh, I think I think you won in a dishonest way. I would agree with that. I, I felt like it was poor sportsmanship on their part. Um, it just you – know, a little downer to the trip. But, no, I, I got two quick things. I, I, I also want to give a shout-out to Las Vegas. Awesome place. Uh, if I'd have brought an axe and just chopped every roulette table, I'd have come out of there up about two grand probably. But um, that was really the only thing that, that put me under uh, gambling-wise. Sir, what's this uh, carry-on you got here? That's an axe. It's what an for? A- <laughs> chop some roulette tables. I mean, I uh, – Go go I, ahead. Or a hammer or something because, I mean, I, I literally – I don't know how many times I'm like, Chad, I don't know how many times I've ever I've cashed into roulette, but I never – cashed out one time and whatever <laughs> I, I put in, a grand in, in roulette, roulette I lost so but my, my last thing is uh, as you watch the the LSU Alabama game you can find that now on Comcast thanks to their new channel lineup I believe at 1005 <laughs> which we were talking about earlier I, I just don't understand the need to confuse everybody with these <laughs> just ridiculous channels um you know me and Drew were talking about the good old days when we first I remember the first time my dad even brought a cable box in and said, hey, we got we got cable, which I'm not even sure I knew what it meant, but I knew it was a dial that had 2 through 36. And we progressed. You get in trouble for turning it too quick. Yeah, if you turn it too quick, he thought I was going to break it for some reason. And, <laughs> well, then we progressed to the, the digital cable box that went up to 99, I believe. And 99 um, was the was the Spanish soap opera. Right, and, and the greatest invention ever, the, the descrambler, uh, hopefully – you can't like do like the cheater box. Wouldn't be double jeopardy now, but whatever it would be, because we had every descrambler you could possibly have. Country Young, we heard yeah. on a podcast that you used to have a uh, descrambler. We're gonna you're Andrew gonna saw the first about seventeen WrestleManias and every good boxing match, and uh, I think the descrambler was a hundred dollars, and those things were about fifty bucks a piece. But and the Playboy Channel, I believe that was was that on there. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm sure. No, you always had to change it off of Channel seventy five at the end of the night so people didn't know you're on it. But, but no, now change we've gone from, the previous we've gone from the ease of thirty six to ninety nine to you know when they went up in the hundreds and was terrible that that messed up the descramblers. Well, now we've got. You know, I'm pretty sure ESPN is in the 1600s now. 1605. Um, if you want to watch HBO, you got to go to 1900s. Uh, there's about 900 channels of just random music. I mean, if you want to hear, I'm sure, Thanksgiving music, it's on some <laughs> channel in the 400s. Thanksgiving so music. So I just want to say thanks, Comcast. Uh, you basically just – my wife, I get so mad at her when she's watching on a high-def TV and it's on the regular channel, but she just oh. – she can't keep up with what channel she's on. And I um, – I just think we, we're wasting. Cha- I don't. I know. I don't have two thousand channels, but yet I have to go through two thousand channels. So what, what I wish Comcast would do, and they do this on some channels, is when you flip over to it, it says Watch in HD, and if hit you hit enter. the Enter button, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of channels that that still doesn't show up on. Shane, right. clearly your wife does the same thing. Oh watches, my gosh. And, and mine does too. And she just she she's actually here at the house, and if she was walking around, I'd get her to come on the podcast because I don't know why she does it. She just doesn't care. Chad, does, does Ashley do that? I couldn't tell you. I, know. I, wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even listen. <laughs> well, he's already wow. checked out, folks. He has checked out, well, laid back, looking this, for a brownie. This watch, man is, Does she watch HD uh, on your HD TV? Does she watch non HD channels? Well, we got direct TV, so okay. uh, everything's probably. Every, our standard definition channels are hidden, so she can just watch HD. Oh, that's smart, man. I might make the jump too. So my as I as I wrap that up, I just want to say thanks, Comcast, for making TV watching even more difficult. Well, that's going to about do the roundtable. Um, you know, I got a second or third. You guys, uh, yeah, it's a long podcast. I think we're getting close to a record, but uh, we're not there yet. So we're going to keep talking. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I, I just hope that this is the game that everybody says it's going to be. Uh, I don't want to sit down. You know, my whole Saturday night's blocked off. You know, it's it's going to be in front of the TV. Going to be able to watch football. But the last thing I want to see happen is it to be a blowout. And, and you know, I really don't see how that can happen with the, each team as good as it is. But you never know. That's why they play them every, time, every week. Um, but I'm looking forward to a really, really competitive game and uh, a lot to talk about next week on next week's podcast as we recap how great the game was. So, uh, you know, with that, uh, you can always find us on sccsrt.com or on Facebook at SEC Sports Roundtable. 
Uh, Twitter is SEC SRT. I forgot to mention that I am at Big B Young on Twitter. Okay. I'm at about 95 followers, Shane. So if I get five more, I'd hit triple digits. There we go. Let's kind get him. Let's get him corner. to a hundred there. I think I'm about seven followers. So. <laughs> 93. You can uh, find me on Twitter at, at Chad Caldwell 24. I'm at about 130 something followers. Ooh, big time. Uh, but I do warn that I tweet about James Franklin's whereabouts most of the time, and it drives people nuts, but I love him. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> He's a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me personally at P. Shane Bailey. Um, and of course, the, the round table is at SECSRT. I do want to thank everyone for listening in. I, you know, we don't, uh, we don't throw that out enough, but, uh, you know, we do this because we love it. Um, you guys listen because uh, um, apparently we must entertain you in some way, shape, or form. And we want to thank you for that. If you're, especially if you're l- still listening in this late into the podcast, we want to thank you for doing that. Uh, it means a lot for you to go out there and, and, and taking the time to, to find us, to download us, to like us, uh, to do all that you do out there. It, it just helps, you know, know that we're not doing this because um, we're just talking into a to dead air. We do know that some people are out there listening to it, and we want to uh, take a second to thank you. And, and I need to do that. Remind me, guys, I need to do that at the beginning of the podcast to make sure everyone understands how much we do appreciate them uh, downloading and, and listening to what we have to say. So with that, we're going to end this roundtable, guys. Thanks so much.